All right, let's talk about control points. I'm in ColorFX Pro 4 and I've applied a couple of filters and I'll turn them off now so you can see what my basic image looked like. And now I have this one, contrast color range, which is having the effect of making the colors look a little bit more intense, especially those toadstools. And I also have bicolor filters. That's putting a blue gradient on top and kind of a brown gradient at the bottom. But I like these filters in certain parts of the image, things like the toadstools. And I also like the slight darkening in the foreground. They're bringing out of detail with all these bits of the forest floor in the background. But with the two filters turned on, I'm losing a bit of detail just in the shadow of this tree root. Look, if I turn them on again, that's got a bit too dark for me. So I need to control the filters so that they only show up in certain areas of the image. And that's where control points come in. Look, if you take a look at my filters on the right hand side, contrast color range at the bottom, you have this control points plus and minus. And if I come to buy color filters, the same thing, control points plus and minus. All right, well, I'm going to turn off by color filters just for a second and come to contrast color range because look that red on those toadstools that's getting nice and intense maybe i want this filter just on those toadstools and nowhere else so i come down to my control points and see this one here it says plus add a control point so i click on it and you can see i've got a little cursor here and once i click the picture changes and I get this little point here with a couple of lines here and a bar joining them. This is a control point. If I come to this little button here, it's actually a slider. And if I move it backwards and forwards, you see that circle there, it's getting smaller and bigger. That's controlling the area of influence of this particular control point. Like at the moment, the radius is set so small, it's not affecting anything if I make it bigger you can see it's starting to affect the red of that toadstool, like this. That little bar at the bottom with the slider, this controls the overall opacity, like this. Now I've used a plus control point. Take a look at the side, you get two kinds, plus and minus. And when you add a plus control point, it takes away the effect of this particular filter from everywhere on your picture, apart from where you clicked your control point. And I can show you that because if I come to this little sideways arrows where it says control points and click on it, I can get a list of all the control points I use. I can turn off every control point just for this. It looks like a little light switch to me. Apparently it's a traffic light. And I can see the effect the control points are having on my image. If I want to see much more clearly precisely which bits of the picture that control point is influencing, I can come to here. See this bit little icon here? This is a check mark. And if I tick on it, now you can see much more clearly what's going on. If you are familiar with layer masks, this effectively is a layer mask. Where there's a white bit now, that is the area of the picture that is most affected by the filter. And look, if I make the radius smaller, you can see less of the picture is being affected until eventually hardly anything's being affected. If I slide up like this, the area of the picture that's affected increases. You'll notice it's not a simple circle. Because I clicked on the red area of the mushroom, the reds in the picture are being affected more by this control point than other parts of the picture. And you can see it's following the outline of that toadstool cap. Because I clicked on the red area of the toadstool, then the reds in this picture are going to be affected more than other colors in the picture. But then it gets combined with the radius of the circle. So if I make the circle very small, hardly anything's affected. If I make it bigger, more and more parts of the image are being affected. But can you see that other little red toadstool head just down the bottom? That is being affected more by this control point than say the browner areas surrounding. The influence of a control point appears to be a mixture of this circle here, plus whatever color is lying underneath this point here, the point you initially put down. Now you can move it around like this, see? And as I move it around, you can see different parts of the image are being affected more. Look, if I take it up to here, for example, now it's affecting all the different colors that make up that tree trunk. And I can adjust the radius again like this. If I take it back down again, 
it's come back to affecting the reds of that toadstool cap. And as I say, it appears to be a mixture of whatever color that control point is sitting on top of, plus the area of influence which you define with this circle. Now, I'm gonna show you something. If I hold down my Alt key on my keyboard, click and drag that control point, I create a new control point, and I can move it over to say this motion here. And if I adjust the actual size of it, I can start altering its influence at that point. And that means the filter, the contrast color range filter is also affecting the motion at that point. Okay, so supposing I want to repeat that, supposing I hold down Alt again and click and drag over here, make my circle of influence smaller, I can do this. So now I've got three points. I can either hold down Shift and select all of them like this. And once I have, if I adjust one, then the others get adjusted as well. And also I can do the same thing with the opacity. I can make so they have no effect on the filter and I can raise them up like this. So they have a huge amount of effect on the filter. Now, supposing I like that, supposing I wanted to group those together so that I've always got those three control points influencing the same thing, I can come over to here in my list and click and those get grouped into a group called group one. Now, just in case you're wondering, no, you can't rename the groups and you can't rename the control points, which is a shame. Hopefully in a future update, you'll be able to do that. But for now, supposing I come over to the preview icon, turn it off. Sure enough, you can see if I toggle my filter on and off like that, you can see it's making a difference. And I can adjust my sliders and I can make more of a difference just in that particular area like this. So I've got quite an amount of flexibility here. Okay, that's my contrast color range filter. Now what about the bicolor filter? Let's turn that on. Well, I quite like what it's doing, but I think it makes the picture too dark in the shadow of the tree root. So let's open up the filter and come down to control point. And instead of clicking on plus, I will now click on minus, come to that area of the tree root and click. And sure enough, there's my control point that's knocking out the bicolor filter just in that area. And I can adjust the radius of it like this, and I can adjust the opacity. Now here's one thing to note. If you add a plus control point and you start fiddling around with this little circle, like I did on those toadstool heads, the filter will be reset to zero opacity for your entire image, apart from where the plus control points circle of influence is. And you saw me altering that just a few minutes ago. If you add a minus control point, the filter will stay in place for your entire image, apart from your minus control points sphere of influence. And you can see that right now, there's your circle and I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. And if you come to the opacity slider now, instead of it being on 100%, it is now on 0%. All it's saying is, inside this circle of influence, I've sampled colors, and I've taken the effect of this particular filter down to 0%. And as before, if I hold down my Alt key, I can drag around like this. I can take, say, this control point, I can make it larger or smaller, they can move independently like this. And you know what? I'm going to take a control point and I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to drag it all the way to this side of my picture. So we can take a look at the list of control points. There's my control point. It is called control point six. Next to it, you have 10%. That means this control point is controlling 10% of the screen area. If I make the radius of it bigger, you can see it's now controlling 32% of the screen area. If I make it bigger still, it's now controlling 51% of the screen area. Now you may be looking at this thinking, wait a moment, 51% plus 20 plus 20, plus 20 blah, blah, blah. That adds up to more than 100%, doesn't it? What's going on? That is simple. If you take a look at these control points here, their circles of influence are overlapping each other. So any one bit of the screen might have two or more control points affecting it. But because they're overlapping, you can end up with more than 100% displayed in your list of control points. Now, if I just quickly start turning these on so you can see what the various different control points are doing and which bits they're influencing. Again, you can see 
the areas that the control points are influencing and you can move them around like this to alter various different things. I think for this one, I'm going to get rid of it. I can either press the delete key or I can just come down to the dustbin icon and get rid of it. So that leaves me with these bits around here. I can adjust the area of influence like this. I could group them if I wanted, but instead I will just deselect all of them. And now if I toggle this filter on and off, you can see most of the picture is affected by it apart from these shadow areas because of these control points. Now, supposing I like these control points, supposing I say, okay, I wouldn't mind them on the contrast color range filter. And this time I'll click on control point one, shift click down to control point five. So they're all selected. And now come to copy control points and paste control points. They are pasted in place. That sped up my life by quite a bit because I wanted to take away the contrast color range from that shadow area anyway. And if you look, you can see group one, well, that was my mushroom control points. They are still there, influencing the color of the mushrooms. So now they're deselected, I can see my image as a whole. And if I come to compare, there's my picture before, and there's my picture with the filters applied, but I've protected the shadowy part of the tree roots, and I've used the contrast color range filter to affect just the heads of those toadstools. Now in other plugins in the Nick collection, you get control points which offer you more control, more sliders to play with. But we'll take a look at those when we look at the relevant plugin. This is just an overview of the principle behind them and why they work. Okay, I think we are ready to go on to the next video. So I will see you there.